One other uh, race that I wanted to highlight for you that also is part of a broader trend, this one on the Democratic side. Uh, so there's a, an open seat in the Pittsburgh area and a state representative who's on the left, she's like a Bernie supporter uh, named Summer Lee, who I think we interviewed at Rising, but I'm not 100% sure. She yeah, and two house. other women, it was a very interesting story. Yeah. She and two other women almost ran as like a slate and sort of, you know, pooled their resources and shocked everyone by taking out these establishment, like corrupt good old boys that were representing um, some key districts in Pennsylvania, one of them being a, a district near Pittsburgh. So this sort of, they can't, sort of came out of nowhere, surprised everybody, was able to win these seats. She's now been in the state house for a couple of terms now. So she decides she's going to run for this open, in congressional seat that's currently held by uh, Mike Doyle, I think is the dude's mm -hmm. name. And it looks very much like a kind of a walk in the park. She's up by, you know, like 30 points. It's getting close to election day. And then lo and behold, um, some of the same packs that dropped millions of dollars on Nina Turner and smeared her as effectively an anti-Semite well, guess what? They're doing the same thing now to Summer Lee. Let's go ahead and put this tear sheet up on the screen. Um, it says, this is from Jewish Insider. They say, echoes of Ohio 11 in heated Pittsburgh house race. Um, they point out the fact that Summer Lee, if she's elected, she'd be Pennsylvania's first black congresswoman. Um, think about for a second what Democrats say in terms of supporting black women. And then when you actually have potential first black woman congressman from Pennsylvania, they are and their allies dumping millions of dollars to make sure that doesn't happen. And this is a solid Democratic seat. Whoever wins the primary is ultimately going to be um, the, uh, the member of Congress. Uh, so they're propping up this dude named Steve Irwin. He's an attorney. He's a total sort of like corporatist, centrist type. And it's not just, uh, it, it's two sort of pro-Israel PACs. One of them is, uh, is a new PAC from APAC. And the other one is this uh, DMFI, that Democrats, uh, Democratic Majority for Israel PAC that was very influential in terms of Nina Turner's race. Let's go ahead and put this next tear sheet up on the screen. Um, this is from Jeff Weaver, who was uh, the longest serving aide of Bernie Sanders, just pointing out that you know, while people aren't really paying attention, the Democratic Party establishment is doing everything they can to defeat anyone who might be, you know, progressive, who might cause any problems from leadership and be anything but completely lockstep. Let's put this last piece up on the screen. This is reporting from The Intercept um, from Akilah Lacey here about how two pro-Israel groups have spent close to $3 million to fight state rep Summer Lee's primary campaign in PA-12. Some of the people of the highest levels of Democratic poly Party politics have no idea what these groups are and what their political goals are. So, Sagar, it's sort of like the Nina Turner race, not this cycle, but last cycle, ended up being the model. Mm -hmm. Because Nina, very much like Summer, was up by 30 points on Chantel Brown. It looked like it was going to be a cakewalk. And then all of this money, um, specifically from these pro-Israel groups, flooded into the district. Some of the messaging was actually about Israel, trying to paint Nina as an anti-Semite. Um, but some of it had nothing to do with Israel, ultimately. And it was surfacing her Biden comments and all of this. And it worked in that case, and it's been very effective here, too. There isn't a ton of public polling in this race right now, but uh, where Summer Lee was holding a comfortable double-digit lead, the very latest polling has her tied right now for the nomination. So um, this is the new playbook, and it's been very effective. Yeah, it's interesting to me, because I remember this uh, back in the day. There was a Democratic Majority for Israel pact with Paul Begala, who was on the board, and he would just use it kind of as a cash cow in order to go after whichever candidate yeah. that he wants. I'm sure we'll talk about this on, on the Thursday show. Uh, didn't make it in for today, but there's all that stuff going on in New York with the redistricting oh, yeah, map getting struck too. down. It's fascinating. But you can also see who gets to get run against who, mm -hmm. what's allowed, all of that. Just previewing a little bit of that. So I think it's a fascinating story in the inter-democratic wars as well. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, look, it worked once. Not just once. I, just, I think it's worked many times over. And I wonder if it's going to work this time around. Because this doesn't have quite as much attention. But it still very much could sway voters. And there's a significant, there is a significant Jewish population in this district. There you go. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, I just want to underscore... Next time Democrats talk about how they center black women, they mm -hmm. care about black women, and all of this stuff, like, just remember, they are spending millions to prop up a white dude, you know, who happens to back their ideological agenda 
over what would be the first black woman congressman from Pennsylvania. Just showing you that all of their rhetoric, ultimately they are as ideological as it comes. It's all about just making sure that they're gonna have a reliable vote to keep all of their 80-year-old asses in leadership and all of their consultant industrial complex grift going. And the very fact that you might have someone who might possibly have something to say that's critical of their leadership and can't 100% be counted on for every single vote to do whatever you tell them to do, they will do anything to make sure that doesn't happen. So that's one other thing to watch tonight. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.